places and, and I've been really impressed with the staff, you know, the fact that you come in and you know, there's, these days there's a huge amount of numbers of people around and um, but everyone has a certain individual job to do and, um, and, and how, how um, cohesive it is and how people work together. Uh, so I've been hugely impressed by that. It's been really um, satisfying to be part of it. Um, so yeah, that, that's the thing that I missed in the England stuff and now I've got. Well, Keith, uh, six weeks into the job now. Is there everything you hoped for? Well, it couldn't have gone any better, could it? I mean, we've had some fantastic results. Um, it's been a bit of a whirlwind, I must admit, six weeks coming into it. So um, every day been really busy, really enjoyed it. I mean, I'm back on the grass working with players, um, working with my staff, um, thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, yeah, the results have gone fantastic. We're obviously into the first throws of it. We're not getting carried away, but certainly great start for us. Can you talk us through your role in a bit of a bit more sort of clarity I guess how you differ from um, from Paul Simpson in training and on the match day there's not a great deal of difference from myself and Paul I think you know we we all have our strengths and weaknesses I think um, very similar we, we think the similar we think th uh, the same way in terms of style of play um, we're trying to uh, add our experiences uh, over over a number of years obviously Paul been involved in more management than I have. Um, with me, it's more the coaching side of it. So uh, I think generally on the on a day to day basis, we we pick and choose who's who's going to obviously take the sessions. Uh, we we have a collective. Obviously, the, the manager has the final say, and uh, Dean's been really, really um, in terms of uh, promising, in terms of very very strong and strong in his ways and his views of how he wants the game to be played. So we're guided well. Um, and then obviously just support as much as we possibly can the players trying to give them an identity and a purpose of how they're playing uh, and we just keep on checking on that every every day and how well we're doing and and then obviously things to improve on. And obviously Dean's not been long into into management but what's impressed you uh, about the way he goes about his role? Well, he's very forthright, he, he, he's got a clear vision of how he wants to play. Um, so that obviously helps us in terms of, of, of coaches because uh, that's important. We want a direction to go on and obviously Dean's uh, clear on that. Uh, I really like his honesty. Um, he's a really honest guy. I never met Dean six weeks ago, to be perfectly honest. Obviously, Paul knew him a little bit earlier on, obviously, with, with Shrewsbury connection. But uh, for me, it was the first time I met Dean. But how honest he is and how... Uh, and also a sign of humility about him as well, you know, that uh, you know he's got that um, real personal um, uh, connection with, with people. And uh, I like that. And, I, and, I've, and I've been really impressed by that. And obviously... Uh, he started really well. I think uh, he's very, very clear in what he wants to do. And sort of similar to, to Simo, really, you, you came here from the England youth setup. Uh, what was the appeal of City? How did the move come about? Really, uh, all of a sudden, um, Bristol City, I, I worked at Cheltenham a few years ago and obviously just, just up the road. So I knew the magnitude of the football club and the potential of the football club. So, and had a, also a really good uh, relationship with the football club. I took a few people on loan here back in the in the late uh, two thousand eight two thousand nine. So, uh, so that was all, all, already I had a connection with the football club and worked closely with it. Um, but obviously, me myself being five years working with the England FA it has a, a certain time span because we don't get the day to day work like you would do at a football club. So I come to a stage where my time was really, I had five years there. I wanted to get back on the grass. I wanted some purpose. I wanted some direction about on a daily basis of, of working towards a goal. Uh, and when Dean spoke to me, as I said, out of the blue, um, talked about his aspirations, talked about what he wanted to do for the football club, um, that really excited me. And I thought it was a great opportunity for me to come back into the game on a full-time basis in terms of a daily basis and working. Um, and I've, I've got to say, it's, you know, I know it's five, six weeks in, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Now we'll sort of dive into your professional footballing career, but I understand you've got a cousin who uh, went down the music route, KK Downing, uh, with he's with heavy metal band Judas Priest. You didn't fancy joining him down the music career, no? No, no I didn't have the long hair. Um, no, no. Uh, Kenny was uh, he's a distant cousin from mine. It's a second, third uh, uh, cousin from me. Uh, I've kept in touch with Kenny over the years. Um, 
obviously for the people listening in, this is many years ago, 1970s and 80s, they're actually still going. I think they still do world tours, although Kenny doesn't go on them anymore. But um, no, really heavy metal band, sort of like the Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelins of the world. So um, yeah, it was before my time, sort of late 70s or mid 70s. Uh, I came a little bit later than that, sort of uh, with the, uh, the two-tone and the clash and the jam and things like that. But no, I've kept in touch with Kenny. He's He, he did have a, a golf course over at Bridge North and and obviously uh, he's got other aspirations, other things now that he's doing. Excellent. Well, we'll go on to the, the football then, which for you, I think, started around sort of the early 1980s. It was a Notts County from there on, on to Wolves. Double promotion when you rose up the divisions, Football League trophy win as well. You must have some real fond memories of your, of your time at Molyneux. Yeah, I have seven seven playing years, also coaching there for five, six years. So I spent a lot of my football life down at Wolves. Um, yeah, it's a club that I've sort of grew up with, uh, lived not far from Wolverhampton as well. So um, yeah, had 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 huge amount of uh, success with them. It was the revival years, as they call it. It was back in the low, lower divisions. The club had sort of bottomed it right out and um, working and playing with Stevie Ball, Andy Much, uh, players that... Um, a sort of legendary status there. It was a it was huge success and and, and great enjoyment having a Wembley appearance as well and playing in front of eighty thousand. So great memories there. And not only that, but really good friendship with the players. We still meet up every now and again, and um, you know we're like sort of brothers brothers in arms really with it, with each other. So it's uh, it's one of those sort of. Uh, lifelong football clubs that you're sort of affiliated to, and um, you know I, I always enjoy going back there. Yeah, you were sort of instrumental in that midfield, really. Uh, I think over two hundred or over two hundred and twenty appearances, yeah. and then you moved to Birmingham City. Obviously, yeah. you know nearby, a sort of local rival. Um, how did that move come about? Was it we well, talked about at the time? Yeah. Um, well, it was a free transfer. I was actually surprised to get a free transfer from Wolves. I had seven years there, and I think there was a time where um, Sir Jack Hay would have just taken over, so they had a bigger aspirations in terms of the money. So they changed the squad around quite a bit. So I ended up down, going down the road. It, and it was a shame because I, I had a serious injury at sort of third, fourth game in. Uh, and it finished my season. I had a dislocation of the ankle. And um, to be perfectly honest, I sort of never really was the same player after that, really. And, and, I, and I left Birmingham only after one season when Barry Fry took over. And then went just uh, up to Stoke and, and had a season with Joe Jordan and Lou Macari. And my, my career then sort of went went sort of downhill a little bit, ended up down to Cardiff for, for three three months and then on to Hereford to finish my career at 32. So, um, yeah, I was lucky enough to play locally, around, around the Midlands based. And, um, you know, I, I don't regret my time there. I had, I had some fantastic uh, time playing football and then having aspirations of trying to stay in it and, and coach. So, um, yeah, sort of started my career coaching at Hereford and, and then sort of went back to Wolves and and sort of being a Cheltenham manager. So I've sort of done the, the whole spectrum of sort of coaching from youth football through to senior football and Premier League with, with West Brom as well, having a caretaker stint there as well. So, uh, yeah, got some 25 years of experience and I'm hoping to use that and try and bring success for Bristol City. So was it the injuries which kind of meant you sort of felt that like you'd retire sort of fairly early then, I guess. And so at what point did you think, right, I'm, I want to go down a coaching route? Yeah, good question. I actually started when I was younger. So I, I would take, when I played for Wolves, I would take the under 14s on a Sunday. So I was always having a huge amount of interest in, in football itself and coaching, coaching youngsters. So um, I got my uh, qualifications very early at the age of 28. So I did it while I played. Um, and then obviously when I finished at 32, uh, I could use those qualifications of, of, of starting out. Um, but great, huge grounding and huge huge learning for me, even starting at Hereford, who was a small club and having to do everything, you know, sort of take, driving minibuses, cleaning balls, putting the kit out, taking the sessions. Um, great, great grounding for me. Uh, and then going back to my uh, football club at Wolves, um, you know, that was again, huge learning and then and then the, the pathway you, you then go into senior football you do your management uh, that's different altogether now when you're actually heads above, above the wall and you're making the big decisions and you're getting the criticism as well as the praise um, and then doing the, the West Brom thing at the Premier League and having six seasons in the Premier League and having 150 Premier League games under your belt and that's that's huge huge learning for me as well dealing with 
the so-called best players um, and then going to England and then working with the best youngsters. So trying to give you a sort of a map out of my sort of career without boring you too much. It's a sort of full spectrum of sort of, you know, development through to, to Premier League footballers. I mean, it's absolutely, it's fascinating. Um, and I wanted to ask you about going to Cheltenham Town. I know you're like Wolves, you're held in high regard there as well. I mean, did you enjoy that experience? And especially when you look back on the 07 08 season, went down to the final day, I think, where you, yeah. you got you got that win you needed. What were those, what was that like? Oh, I mean, it's uh, that was a huge achievement for me. I think there's, there's a couple of things that, from my coaching perspective, winning the Euros in 2017, which is the first time in 25 years, and then the Cheltenham, keeping them up, uh, although it took the last game of the season. Um, you know, that we all know that Cheltenham's a small club, with small finances, and to actually be in the League One as it was and staying in that League One for two consecutive seasons was a huge achievement. And um, yeah, I'm very proud of it. I always think that you know, whenever you go into a football club, it's what you leave behind. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that wherever I've been, I've, le I've left, uh, left it in a better place or contributed it into being a better place. Um, I'm hoping to do that here. I'm hoping to obviously uh, give this the best possible chance we can and um, and, tr and try and get this into a better position than when it is because it's got huge foundation. You know, uh, Lee, has, Lee, Lee Johnson has set it up brilliantly well and, and has, has developed it over the years and um, we've just got to try and continue that. You had a little spell as well um, with West Brom in, in the Premier League. Um, what was that experience like to, to manage the first team? I know it was only temporary, but yeah. what was it like? Yeah, had seven games over Christmas period. First and foremost, Steve Clark was manager and Kev Keane was assistant. So it was a huge shock when they, they lost their jobs. It wasn't expected. And, um, and, and the first thing is obviously the massive disappointment for those people. Um, but then obviously you've got to get on with the job. And then we had such a busy period over Christmas. You know what it's like. You sort of, you know, there's four or five games over two weeks, you know, so... You didn't have much chance to really think about it. Um, but, you know, it, looking back, um, huge, huge experience for me, huge learning curve. Um, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the, you know, the challenge, uh, hopefully sort of contributed and getting a few points on the board. And, and we, we finally ended up just surviving in that year. So I, I think the likes of West Bromwich Albion, it's, you know, it's not just about the Premier League, it's about staying in the Premier League and, and trying to establish yourself there and, and to, be contributing to that for six seasons, you know, um, was huge, uh, a huge achievement. So you joined the FA in 2015, yeah. and it was in 2017, as you alluded to earlier on. You you took the under 19s to the uh, European finals, yeah. which you won with Jay De Silva as, as captain. Silva. Yeah, I mean, tell us about that run and what made that team so special. Um, well, it was a strange one because we, we nearly got knocked out in the pre. Uh, pre-qualifiers we got beat by Wales which nobody knows about we played Wales and we got beat 3-2 uh, you know and, and they had a good team Wales did you know Tyler Roberts and Woodburn and, and uh, Ethan Ampadu they were a good team so we got beat and actually we managed to get through by the skin of our teeth through to the next qualifying stage so that was a huge I think that was probably a bit of a turning point because of the realisation of we needed to step up our game so we got through that and then we went through a fantastic, we talk about momentum, we went through a real pre qualifier we beat Spain 3-0, um, which got us through to the finals, which Spain obviously notoriously a really hard opposition. So going into the finals, we had huge momentum. Um, the difficulty to try and explain really in short term is that when the finals are in July, at the end of July, so the player availability is always difficult because it's the start of the pre-season. So all the big clubs take their young players with them to certain tournaments around the world. So to establish and get 18 your best players is always very difficult. But we went there with um, you know the Ryan Sessignons, the Mason Mount, the Jay De Silvers. We had a really good core set of players there. Um, and I've got to say, you know, we we played exceptionally well. Didn't lose a game. We won all uh, won all five. Uh, and we're worthy champions. Um, what was great was creating a bit of history. It had never been done for 25 years. I think it was under 18's tournament then. So uh, that was a huge achievement for the boys and uh, one I'm sure will stay with me. It's certainly for me, in terms of a coaching uh, achievement, it's right up there. You know, And, and the boys were, were excellent right the way through because it's, it's good experience for them. They're having three weeks away from home. Hopefully you're hoping that one of the two of these will go on to senior football, which gives them the experience to, when they go into World Cups and European Champions at senior level. And that's the whole purpose of them giving that game time and that, ex that experience of, of tournament football.
mentioned Ryan Sessegnon, Mason Mount, you know, great examples of, of those kinds of players. And Jada Silver, of course, having working with him now, um, how much progress has, has he made since you were co coaching him? Well, Jay's obviously, uh, what, what's the most, I always talk about football league experience. So these boys have really got huge potential at youth football and you watch them a lot of the time when they're playing under 23 football. So there's a huge difference now from playing 23 football to senior football. And it's not just about the physicality or the, the speed of it. It's also the mental aspect where you're, certainly the championship, you're talking about 46 games plus, you know. So it's not just about the physical and the tactical. It's a mental stage as well. So, you know, Jay is obviously now growing up to be a man and to deal with those sort of rigours and those, and the expectancy and the pressures of those. So uh, seeing him now, obviously now he's, he's more mature and grown up and, uh, you know, he's still a top player. You know, I, I think Jay... There's, there's a bit of misconception is the, the stature and have been only five six five seven but you know he's a hugely talented footballer um very very good with the ball it's great to be working with him again uh, and hopefully we can achieve something again you know in, in a red shirt rather than a, an England shirt and what was the um what's the appeal of international management because it must oh, we talked about it earlier on really I guess it differs to club coach and club management um what did you enjoy most about your time with the FA Working with the best players, I think really working with hugely talented young players. Uh, the domestic clubs um, need huge credit for what they do. You know, England obviously had a, a rich reign of form in 2017. We won two World Cups and a European, but that's really down to the domestic working in terms of the EPPP, the coaching on the grass with the, with the clubs. So the, dif the difference probably from club football to 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 England football is is a, is that time where you have opportunity to work with your players on a daily basis, whereas England you'll have ten days and then they go back for for two months and then they come back for ten days, and the difficulties obviously with the England football is the fact that you're trying to um, you're trying to uh, produce a winning team uh, in such a short space of time and if I could say maybe add a squad of twenty you'd have fifteen different clubs. So they all have a different style. So you have to make sure that you have one style in terms of playing for England and making sure that everybody knows that in a short space of time. So that was the difficulties, but um, we got it. And I think, you know, huge credit to Dan Ashworth who came in at that time to produce an England DNA where everyone was on the same sh uh, same uh, page in terms of throughout the age groups. Everybody was similar the way they played. So there was the continuity and the consistency right through the age groups uh, became very evident. And you've obviously worked with Gareth Southgate fairly closely in the last sort of five years or so. Um, you were part of the scouting network of Russia, 2018. How did that come about? Well, uh, we, we there was there was five coaches going out there to to obviously do the scouting. So uh, it was a huge operation going out to Russia. It was absolutely fantastically organised so well. Um, so yeah, we went out there for a couple of weeks. We were looking at uh, designated teams that we had this prediction of whether we were going to go through through the rounds. And I ended up um, being part of the Swedish uh, game in the quarterfinals, where I had followed Sweden uh, throughout the competition, and then having to go in and obviously deliver it to um, to the staff and things, and going in actually onto the camp uh, in Russia. Um, fantastic memories and. Just having a little bit of part to play was was great. But Gareth uh, and Steve Holland, of course, were, were were exceptional people there, allowing that to happen and obviously being part of it was a uh, huge satisfaction. Um, then obviously you left the FA to, to come join Bristol City. Was it Dean or Mark, who asked, Mark Ashton, who headhunted you? Um, what did you miss about club football? Um, I don't know who, who headhunted me. Obviously, I had a call from Dean. Uh, I don't, I've obviously spoke to Mark over the years. I know Mark um, over the last two or three years. So, uh, But Dean sort of originally spoke to me. Um, it's just the day-to-day -day runnings of it and, and actually involved and working with fantastic staff on a daily basis, everyone having one uh, huge goal to try and achieve the same thing. And... Um, you know, just not just working with the players, but the staff on a daily basis. And, and I've been really impressed with the staff, you know, the fact that you come in and, you know, there's the, these days there's a huge amount of numbers of people around, and um, but everyone has a certain individual job to do and um, and, and how, how um, cohesive it is and how people work together. Uh, so I've been hugely impressed by that. It's been really um, satisfying to be part of it. Um, so, yeah, that that's the thing that I missed at the England stuff. And now I've got, 
obviously three wins uh, from three games has been the perfect start really Um, with all the experience you have coming here do you feel this club has a genuine chance of doing something special yeah but like it like everything it's time it's over time I think if you put into context we've got a new manager although he's been here for a while I think we've got two new coaches um, we're adding some players. We're changing the the, the squad slowly but surely. Um, I've been hugely impressed by the players. Their attitude to the work on a daily basis has certainly been very, very impressive and has got us to a certain level at the moment. But I think everybody's aware that we have to not get carried away. We have to be fully aware that every day is so important. The Championship has a, a habit of sort of biting your backside if you're not on it on a daily basis. Um you, you, you have to be you have to be consistent in what you're doing, consistent in terms of your approach to uh, each game. And you know I, I, it's a long-winded answer, but there's, there's potential here, and uh, we see signs of it. We've got to try. It's been so close over a number of years. We we just missed out. Um, there isn't a majorly uh, a lot wrong with what's happened before. It's been a huge foundation built, and we just have to try and improve those certain consistencies you know whether it's set plays whether it's about levels of the game and how you play as an individual as a team or as a unit if we can get those to certain amounts of level and and, and listen we're, we're going to lose games absolutely sure about that but it's trying to lose as many, as few as you possibly can and trying to churn out performances that you don't quite get right but get some points out of whether it's a draw or something to grind out a season and we have to have that mentality. Uh, and what's good about this squad is that last night has proved that we've got some competition. It's really important that players are a healthy competition to keep your place, to play well. Um, and if you don't, then obviously you've got someone there to replace you. And I think that's healthy. And I think it's respectful that there should be good 20, 22 players here that, that have a, earn a right and have a right to play if they're playing well. And that, that's a, obviously a healthy problem for Dean to select, but it's certainly the best problem to have rather than only selecting 11 players that could, you know, that, that are only on form. So if everybody's firing and everyone's pushing each other, that will certainly help us to achieve what we want to achieve. Well, the game on Wednesday night against Northampton, rightly the players are absolutely buzzing. You know, the, the confidence is so high going into the game on Sunday against Stoke City. How do you... I guess, manage those levels so that overconfidence doesn't creep in? Well, I think we, I think the one thing about it, we had we had huge amount of respect for Northampton and we'll have a huge amount of respect for Stoke City. So the first thing is actually um, to let the players know that what they're up against. So um, whatever the levels of football you're playing up against, you have to make sure you have a huge amount of respect and a huge amount of detail and diligence about what you're coming up against. And I think if, if we can deliver that to the players, uh, and keep working on what we want to do uh, and try and add our philosophy and our way of playing and be consistent with that and um, you know be clear and have a healthy environment with that and to actually get them to work on a daily basis I think you know that takes care of itself um, it's 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 natural to get you know uh, carried away and to be to be enjoying it you want them to have that belief and that confidence but you have to have the boundaries and make sure that what gets you there is the hard work and the diligence and how you do it and how you work hard and you run hard. Um, the game still provides that you have to run and work hard at it. Um, and obviously the skill comes next, but it's important that they work on a daily basis and whatever they put in on that Monday to Friday, do they deserve to win on the Saturday? So whether you've done it individually or whether you've done it as a team or a unit, you know, uh, if you look across that room at, at five to three, has my players has my fellow players done done the right work throughout the uh, throughout the week? And if you have, then you've got a chance of winning. And I think that's that's the that's the environment we want to create. You know, we want to create that, that every day is a really important working day, not just for uh, the team, but for you as an individual. And I see a lot of people working on extras. I see a lot of people at the moment working on their shooting, working on their crossing, working on their heading, uh, and they can only get better by doing that.